so I am a pediatric radiation oncologist and I did go to medical school. A lot of people don't even know that radiation oncology exists. So I kind of fell into the field, but it's really exciting. And I do have an opportunity to learn from different specialties, work with physics guys, work with engineers, and other medical, um, medical colleagues. So children do get cancer. I mean, it's an uncommon thing, and a lot of people don't even know, they're not really, they don't recognize it. But in actual fact, the second leading cause for death for children is cancer in the United States. So it's an important thing, but the good news is we're doing better. And uh, we are, it's, it's something that requires effort from a lot of different specialties, and it does require uh, surgeons, medical oncologists, and radiation oncologists working together. This is an example of a tumor in a little girl that I, I saw in the past, and you can see that there's this large tumor that's circling green that's involving the sacrum. She had a lot of pain. It went on for months, and before they even figured what, what was going on, she was, she was having a harder and harder time to walk. And so when they did the x-ray, they found this large tumor. They needed the surgeons to figure out what it was. They gave, gave us some tissue or did a biopsy. And after that, they realized they couldn't remove it. So she got chemotherapy and she got radiation. So it was a team effort and fortunately she's doing okay right now. This is another little uh, boy that uh, I treated a couple of years ago now. And um, when I saw him, he'd been diagnosed for, with a brain tumor, that huge thing there. You can see on the MRI scan. And he'd had that for about two or three years. And he'd had surgery, he'd had chemotherapy, he'd had five different kinds of chemotherapy, but it wasn't working. When I got to him, he couldn't swallow. He was, he was barely moving, he couldn't walk. And his, and his other doctors had said to, me, had said to the family, um, we don't think we can do anything. But his parents were motivated, and they came to see us, and we, we tried to do what we could for him. So, uh, what I do as a profession now, and a lot of what I think about, is proton radiotherapy. And you might think, what about a proton? Why a proton? And a lot of you, just to give a refresher course about what a proton is, that's a hydrogen atom on the, on the right-hand side, and you can see that a hydrogen atom is one proton, which is in the nucleus, and an electron that, that circles around it. If you strip the electron off that nucleus, then you have a proton. And that's what we use for therapy. So on this slide, there's our hydrogen atom. We've stripped off the proton, and we take a millions, millions, millions of these, and then we inject them into this uh, particle accelerator. That particle accelerator with magnets accelerates the protons to uh, almost half the speed of light. And as they're accelerating, they're, they go in a larger and larger diameter, and eventually they shoot out. And they shoot out after, uh, in our machine, they get up to 250 mega electron volts, which is huge. It's really, really, really fast. And then from here, they actually go into this, well, actually, the, this thing here is the same thing as this. So the uh, protons are accelerated in here, and then they shoot into this, these treatment rooms that, um, that we have. This whole building is about the size of a football field, so the diagram is out of proportion, obviously. But each of those three rooms, and this one on the side, we treat patients. And we have about 100, 120 patients that we treat a day using protons. And that's all they're getting at that point in time in this machine. So this is our proton machine. So just to put it in perspective again, this thing here, one of, each one of these is the same thing as this thing here. So just to put it in perspective, there's this little guy here. He's a normal person, he's not a midget. And this is the size of our machine here. The diameter is 13 meters, and it weighs about the same size as a jumbo jet. And the patient is actually laying inside of this kind of cylinder. Now the patients don't see this, and all they see is the inside of that cylinder because we've encased it in a room. But all of that other stuff in the back is, is in the background. So when the, when we, when the patient comes in, they come in for treatments every day, can take anywhere from five to eight weeks, depending on what we're treating, and they get the same treatment a little bit at a time. And we treat a lot of kids like this, and uh, the really little kids that we have to treat, we have to actually use sedation. So I just, I have a prop. So this here is what we call an immobilization mask. And we make this if we're gonna be treating the brain. So any of our patients who are getting treated, um, 
they get one of these made. It's a thermoplastic, and you actually put it over the patient's face, and they're laying still. Now, the point of this is that we want to be able to deliver the protons where they need to be. And so if they're in this mask, they're not going to be able to move their head, and it fixes them from the same, in the same position from one day to the next day, and then the protons will come in and treat wherever they have to. So during this whole process, the patient's laying still, we deliver the treatment, it takes about 15, 20 minutes, and then you're done. So why protons? Well, protons are really cool. Proton, so this is a typical x-ray. So if you pretend that a patient is right here, and the skin is right here, and you're doing x-ray therapy from here, you get a lot of radiation right under the surface of the skin, and then you get less and less and less and less, and something comes out the other, other side of the patient. So that's how you get a chest x-ray, that's how you get dental x-rays. Because the radiation is actually passing through the patient, so some of the radiation is going to be hitting the film on the other side. So you can imagine that if I'm treating something in the back, all of that radiation is actually going to come out the front and say through a patient and uh, through their heart, their lungs, or whatever's in the way. Now with proton radiotherapy, if you're treating protons here, there's the skin, you get some radiation, and then you get where the tumor would be, you get all of the radiation delivered, and nothing comes out the, the front end. So you can, th you can think about that. If I'm treating some, ch some child brain, I, if I want to treat the center of it, if I treat from here, nothing's going to come out that side, so well, there's going to be less brain radiated. And actually, radiation isn't good for you. So it is a balance that I have to achieve, is treating what I need to, but staying away from everything else. So it seems to make a lot of sense for treating vulnerable patients. So it's that little boy that we treated in the beginning. So this was his tumor in the beginning, and uh, the last time we looked at it, it would turn into this. And so it was effective for him. He's actually doing quite well, he's thriving, he's going to school, and uh, he's having a good quality of life. He's eating on his own, and uh, his, his mom is going to be forever grateful for what we were able to do for him. So I think we do make a difference. We're not quite there yet. You know, we're not fixing everybody. We, 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 I think we successfully cure about 70% of the kids we see, and it's through efforts of national trials, it's work that we put together, We've been treating kids, historically we weren't even treating children. 50 years ago, it was illegal to treat a child with chemotherapy. Now we have international and national cooperative studies that we work together. And it takes surgeons, it takes radiation oncologists, it takes medical oncologists, and with physics and engineers all working as a team. So it's a success story. And here's some more. And, uh, for instance, this little boy here, he had a prostate tumor, believe it or not, at the age of two. Uh, he had a very large brain tumor, and now he's a math whiz. He, he was um, a little boy who was in Haiti and, and, and ended up getting in an accident. They did a scan and they found a brain tumor. And this little girl also had a little brain tumor. But they're all doing well. So I think going forward, we're certainly making a lot of effort and a lot of progress in treating our kids, but we need to do better. So I hope this kind of gives you a sense of what a radiation oncologist does and what we can do and, and how we work together with the other specialties to really make a difference. And that's it.